Hello there, from a hotel somewhere in Florida. I've been out on the road the last month with uh, Tommy Igo and the Birdland Big Band, and I've had some requests uh, through my Facebook page about my fingerings for one of the tunes in our book, Gotta Match. Tommy likes to play it really fast, so fast that you can't even think about it, and I've kind of, I think I've kind of worked out some good fingerings, and some people have been curious about what I've been doing, so I thought I'd take a little video and show you. Um, Trick number one is having a six string bass, which is, I actually brought this particular bass out for this tour because it has a top string and makes it easier. Although I've played it on a Fender Precision, and you know, there's this one stretch up here. I'll have to do another video about uh, the best fingerings for a Fender Precision, but yeah, it's a little trickier on a four string. Not impossible, but trickier. You gotta stretch more. Probably be a lot easier on a jazz bass. But anyway, let me see if I could uh, crop in here. This is very low fi As you can see, I'm in a hotel room and I have no amp or anything, so I hope you could hear this, but at least you could see it. I have no dots on this bass, but this is the 12th fret right here. So, first part of it. Then I shift down a half step. Same thing, just over a string. Now, just that alone, at the tempo we got to play that, I tend to flatten my finger, my index fingers. Like I kind of catch those two notes with one finger rather than trying to actually shift that finger. So I go. Right? <sighs> Hands are cold. Now the next part is where it gets slippery. I do it in basically two positions. So what is this? Uh, five, seven, ninth fret here on this uh, whatever note that is, a B. Um, yeah. Um, see, I can't even think about it. The trick is memorize it, don't look at your hands, don't even think about it. If you thought about it, you just missed a bar. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. Okay, so starting on ninth friends. Once again, barring that finger. And shift up a half step. Barring that finger again. Then you can just cut right over in that same position. And here's where it gets a little squirrely. I kind of got to reach back and shift and stretch and stretch back. Uh, let me do that again and I'll show you uh, another little squirrely thing I've uh, found it. Now that last lick You guys out there that only play electric bass probably have no problem with the pinky and uh, this middle finger doing that. But as an upright player, I, you know, I kind of have more strength than these two fingers right here. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's easier on those, but you don't have time to get back there. I mean, it would be a little sloppy if, you know, to, to make another shift, I decided just to practice it every day and try to build up strength in that pinky to kind of make that connection. I'll do the whole thing slowly again. And actually, at tempo, I mean, everybody in the band's ghosting that low A anyway, so, yeah, if you can't make it. Although you should be able to. You'll be a better, better bass player than I am. It's funny, without the amp, like I'll sit here in my hotel room, I'll sit here in my hotel room for a few hours practicing, you know, playing it, and, and it sounds so sloppy because you're hearing the string noise bouncing. I mean, it's going so fast, you're kind of hearing the rebound of the string. You're hearing the pitches on the other side of the string with no amp. And then, you know, I'll just like, oh man, I can't play it, I can't play it. Then I'll get into the sound check and kind of noodle with it. And when you can actually only hear what's coming through the pickups in the amp, it's like, okay, I'm playing that pretty cleanly. Oi. Um, and my, for my next trick, I would like to pull a rabbit out of my hat. 
Right hand. Oh, yeah, one, let me mention right hand. One thing I got to do on a six string is something I picked up from Lincoln Goins, kind of never anchoring my thumb, right? So I'm always muting these strings. See, I'm kind of like moving my hand rather than anchoring and doing this. Because if you notice the difference, if you put, if you have your hands really close together, your fingers close to your thumb. Now try to do that same thing out here. A little harder because of the distance. You got to keep that distance close, and you can get a little more dexterity. Anyway. Hope that helps somebody. It's just something I work on every day when I get into the hotel. I spend a few hours practicing electric bass because I let somebody else take the upright to the venue. I don't feel like dragging thing everywhere. And this makes a lot less noise in a hotel room. So enjoy. Go shed. <laughs>